What's going on, y'all? Attorney Tom here. An influencer scammed his fans for half a million dollars by creating a BS cryptocurrency coin. And he was so confident, not, not to get away with it, he, he's even admitting that he did it. Yikes. I don't know how to else to articulate it. So we are going to watch CoffeeZilla's video and we are going to go over the legal repercussions of Ice Poseidon's scam coin. This is CoffeeZilla's video. CoffeeZilla is the internet detective. He's a total badass, but I really like his stuff. Um, and uh, CoffeeZilla uncovered this whole scam and did some great work behind the scenes. We're not gonna watch this entire video today because it is 22 minutes long and you know, fair use. But I wanna uh, cover the highlights of it. And um, if you wanna see the rest of the video, go to CoffeeZilla's channel and uh, check him out. Let's watch the the intro to this video. I've seen a lot of stuff on the criminal side of things. I'm going to talk about the potential civil case, which I think a lot of people, a lot of these influencers just don't see. They can get sued civilly for fraud. The famous live streamer Ice Poseidon just scammed his followers for up to half a million dollars, and I'm going to prove it. He personally profited $300,000 by stealing money out of a crypto scheme that he set up. And when I confronted Ice Poseidon, who's better known by his real name, Paul Danino, about this scam, he was shockingly honest. You want to keep the money that's not yours, that you took from the project, even though you'd failed to deliver. I mean, I'm not really sure what you want me to say, but yeah. I'm trying to like get you to return the money because it's 100% still available and you could do that. Yeah, I could give the money back. It is within my power, um, but I'm gonna look out for myself and not do that. I, I, you know, I don't like know what else to say. That's just- Can we listen to that again? That might shock a lot of people. We don't even need to watch the rest of the video. He just basically admitted that he's gonna keep all this money that he rug pulled from people. Yeah, I could give the money back. It is within my power, um, but I'm gonna look out for myself and not do that. That clip right there is going to be the very first video that the jury hears. Maybe the very first thing presented as evidence in a potential trial. I can almost guarantee you that are becoming more and more common in part because of how easy they are to pull off. Ice Poseidon's scheme apparently took him only two weeks of work to set up before he apparently got bored with the project and decided to stop working on it and just took the money. Like seriously, how long did you work? I'm just curious. All I can say is a fork, so I don't know, a couple weeks. A couple weeks, $300,000. That's it's, it's a nice chunk of change. Now I pleaded with Paul or Ice Poseidon to return the money that he stole in part appealing to the guilt that he was taking money from his fans who were all much worse off than him. Ice Poseidon's response was that he didn't like how that made him sound. I don't know if you're aware of the fact that your average fan has way less money than you. So you're just taking from poor people. Like you understand that, right? That is definitely not, that, that is not a good way to put it. That's a pretty shitty way to put it, my dude. It's, uh... I think it's a pretty shitty thing to do. From the very beginning, this story shocked me, but especially the twist at the end that I can't tell you about yet. But what I can tell you is that this is my most in-depth investigation yet. So I see some people in the comments asking about uh, the rules of evidence. Could this video be introduced in a potential trial? And the answer is almost certainly parts of it. So I don't know about the entire thing, but there's something called, you know, statement against party interest. And when you have Ice Poseidon basically saying, yeah, I could give the money back. It is within my power, um, but I'm gonna look out for myself and not do that. Those clips probably almost certainly would be used in trial. And of course you'd have to authenticate it. You'd have to, you know, maybe they would get CoffeeZilla to say, you know, where did you record it? Uh, they would get Ice Poseidon to verify whether or not it was his voice under penalty of perjury. Did the phone call actually happen? All these things. But yes, absolutely. Portions of this video could be used as evidence. With the way he used the money, right? At first, it was just sort of sitting around. Then he started sending it to cash out wallets. And eventually I calculated that there's roughly a quarter of a million dollars missing from that marketing wallet. But that's not all. Ice Poseidon had tricked his followers at this point 
by getting them to buy into a vision of a long-term project. The whole idea was that this was going to be a donation platform for streamers and that it would take a while to build. He kept reiterating this again and again. I mean, this is a long-term project. I'm trying to, you know, we're making a donation platform. So I'm gonna put that on my stream and this coin will just be around for the entirety of my streams. He said this a lot in the Telegram too. You know this is long term, right? Thanks guys, I assume everyone is in it for the long haul. Anyone who invests in something should know this was a long term project, so one week is not going to see results. Now later I would find out this was a lie. Ice Poseidon did not see this as a long term project. He actually gave up after two weeks. But I think I'm getting a little ahead of myself. The point is, Ice was getting brazen. He was increasingly intolerant of people who Ice Poseidon saying that this was a long-term project over and over and over again is probably going to be probative evidence to support the claim of fraud. It's one thing if you say, hey, listen, this is a total shit coin. Invest in it at your own will. Roll the dice. Let's pump and dump, blah, blah, or even, you know, whatever. You get the point. But if you say it's going to be one thing and then it's not, that's fraud. And we're going to get into a more technical analysis once we finish the highlights of this video. We had the call you're about to see, and mind you, I'm expecting him sort of to deny everything, like who would take credit for this? Well, Ice would, I guess. It looks like the coin got rugged. You know anything about that? Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, not rugged, but uh, I mean. Well, someone pulled all the liquidity out. That's a, that's a rug, right? That would be a rug, yes, uh, but there is still liquidity in there. 40k got left and 300k got ripped out or <laughs> something like that yeah i mean <laughs> so he pulled 300,000 out leaving only 40,000 left in i don't know if he actually believes this but his justification is it's not a rug pool because i left forty thousand dollars in there this is so bad these guys need to get sued that is exactly what happened right are you laughing i mean is that funny Mm, I mean, no. You're hearing this right. He's admitting he took out 90% of the money, but that's not a rug pull, apparently. He had to do it after all. Uh, the crypto markets were crashing, and if he didn't take out the money, who would? The crypto market is crashing, and the $300,000 is in there. There's two options, right? Leave the money in there, and then if BNB goes down to like $100, the money goes to shit anyways or I could take it and the money is not just going to dust. Or you let the investors in your coin pull out the money so they don't completely lose their ass. Maybe they lose 70% of what they invested in or 30% of what they invested in. But when you wipe the liquidity out, you're the only one profiting. Everybody else who holds the coin can't take out liquidity. This is so bad. And the I money still would have never gone to dust. I mean, it just would go back to the investors when they sold out, when you told them, hey guys, I'm no longer interested in this project. I wipe my hands of it, you know, you got your 50K in, you got your 50K out, you're good, right? You didn't deliver. This is not your money. I, I can't believe you keep thinking of it as like, as your money that's going away. That's your investor's money and it should be their decision what they do with it. Okay, I mean, that's a fair point. That's a fair point. Yet, despite all these fair points I kept making, every time Ice got cornered about the fact that he was basically stealing from his investors, he slowly pivoted his language from, oh, this isn't a rug pull, to more like, well, the investors deserved it. He said, they believe too much in his project and his word. They're like, part of the responsibility is on them as well for being, you know, like uh, putting too much emotion into it. First of all, yeah, if you're going to invest in somebody named Ice Poseidon's coin, you're probably a dumbass. Let's not lie. Second, even if they are dumbasses investing in your coin, that doesn't mean it's okay to defraud them. You said that it was a long-term coin for streaming platform based on donations or a coin for streamers to help them with donations. And it wasn't. It was just a quick fork that you dumped within two weeks. You said you were going to do one thing and you did another. That is called fraud. I agree that investing in any influencer coin is idiotic, but the logic here seems to be insane. They believed me, so it's okay I scammed them? I asked Ice about this. I don't know if you're trying to say they deserve it. You're saying they own, owe some responsibility. I agree they owe some responsibility, but do they deserve to get ripped off? No, I mean, nobody deserves that. It's just I mean, what happened though. 
<laughs> like I said, sometimes you have to look out for yourself. Uh, I don't really know how else you want me to put it. I mean, if you, I mean, you could say it in all these different ways to make it sound as horrible as possible. And you know what? I can agree with you on some of those things. I just don't like to put it in those specific ways because it makes it sound like that was the intention from the start. Would you? I don't like to put it in a way that makes it sound bad. You know, I like to phrase it differently, even though the actions are the exact same. What is this guy doing talking to CoffeeZilla? Look, he's a total dumbass. He's a scammer. We hate him. He's a piece of <laughs> But if you're going to do something illegal, don't talk to an investigator. Don't talk to the police. Don't talk to the internet detective. What did this guy think was going to happen? Did he think that, you know, hey, if I just talk to CoffeeZilla, things are just gonna get better and there it is the final refuge of every scammer i started with good intentions i meant to do the right thing but i kept reminding ice poseidon or paul or whatever like his excuses made no sense because it wasn't as if the money was gone it wasn't as if it had vanished he still had it and could return it at any point he doesn't have to go down as the scammer so i don't know yeah. why you're acting like it has to end with like you being the bad guy here that's not what i'm trying to do at all i'm trying to like get you to return the money because it's a hundred percent still available and you could do that so that's what i'm not understanding is i want to get to that point i don't think we're going to get there if you want the answer uh yeah i could give the money back it is within my power um but i'm going to look out for myself and not do that I, I you know i don't like know what else to say that's just the most honest answer D and this brings up a good point delbert says quote but it was a lot of money y'all it was three hundred thousand dollars that's it i don't want to diminish the value of three hundred thousand dollars that is a ton of money short term like if you had three hundred thousand dollars more in your bank account tomorrow you'd be like holy cow that's a ton of money but over the course of somebody's career what is excluding the potential lawsuit that i think is probably going to come where he's going to have to probably pay that back and then more three hundred thousand dollars to ruin your reputation to ruin your ability to transact business in the future that's nothing you can make that back in a couple years tops especially if you have a, f a following a famous following like ice poseidon even though this is the first time i've ever heard of him the three hundred thousand dollars that he took from this scam he will lose way more over the course of his career because of this way more than 300,000 because he's he's going to ruin his reputation the average home in america is like 400,000 that doesn't even get you a home basically what he says is it, it took him like two weeks he just forked a basic coin and then uh rug pulled it i felt sort of like a failure afterwards to be honest um i didn't achieve my goal of having ice poseidon return the money to his victims however a few hours Afterwards, Ice Poseidon DM'd me one last time. He told me he wasn't going to give all the money back, but he was playing. Yeah, okay. So he says he's going to give back 155K, but then he only gives back like 40K. I want to go to the end of the video where CoffeeZilla elaborates on the options that victims have. And he quite frankly misses a very viable option. And so do the other influencers or YouTubers that made videos about this, such as Moist Critical. They miss this. And that is a civil lawsuit. There may still be ways to prevent stuff like this from happening. There are two things you can really do. Number one, you can share this video so more people become aware of what ICE did and get more eyeballs on it. But two, if anyone was scammed by CX Coin and lost money, they can report their losses to ic3.gov linked below. This is the FBI submission portal if you've been defrauded or wrong. And if enough people report things like this, there's a chance people will be brought to justice. Three, if you lost money on CX coin, you should go talk to your local civil lawyer and you should sue because it is likely fraud and you can recoup your money, maybe even get a class action, get the class certified for all CX coin holders and you make him pay the money back or sue him to the stone age maybe you bankrupt him and actually that's a logistical problem that i'm about to talk to but the point i was trying to make is civil lawsuits exist and the citizen is the one who can bring the civil lawsuit you don't need to wait for a prosecutor or the fbi 
and you're gonna hit him where it hurts if all he cares about is money that is when a civil lawsuit is over money so let's talk about the civil side of things the civil lawsuit side of things i think what a lot of people are gonna say is tom you can't sue them civilly because cryptocurrency is unregulated so they're not doing anything wrong it's an unregulated asset it's the wild west blah 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 that is not true that is not true all being uh regulated means is you know there are some heightened levels of of rules that you have to follow that doesn't mean that you can't commit fraud off of an unregulated asset People get sued for fraud all the time outside of the crypto world for unregulated market activities. I'm gonna look up what state Ice Poseidon lives in. If somebody sues him, what state's law is going to apply? Palm Beach, Florida. And I'm doing this in real time, y'all. So, you know, there might be two or three or four statutes that might apply here. I just type this one in first because this is where my instincts go to. So the, Flor the Florida's Deceptive and Unfair Trade Practices Act is intended to protect the consuming public and legitimate business enterprises from those who engage in unfair methods of competition or unconscionable, deceptive, or unfair acts or practices in the conduct of any trade or commerce. This sounds like selling a terrible crypto coin. Doesn't matter that it's not a regulated asset. It is still a deceptive trade practice. A deceptive trade practice is one that is likely to mislead consumers, such as saying that your crypto coin is going to be the donation tool of the future, and you just quit after two weeks and take all the liquidity. An unfair practice is one that offends established public policy, like rug pulling. <laughs> An action brought by a person who has suffered a loss as a result of the violation of a part, such person may recover actual damages plus attorney's fees and court costs as provided in 501-2105. However, damages, fees, or costs are not recoverable under the section against a retailer who has in good faith, well, we don't even need to keep reading that because there clearly was no good faith, the measure of actual damages is the difference in the market value of the product or service in the condition in which it was delivered and its market value in the condition in which it should have been delivered according to the contract of the parties. This is going to be very hard to calculate the actual damages based on like a speculation of what the cryptocurrency should be worth if it was done right. Because, um, you know, crypto market, I mean, legitimately, there are crypto projects that have good intentions that fail anyway it's probably hard to uh to measure actual damages with respect to this but there are other ways to calculate damages as well such as you know what the damages that you lost and by the way y'all this is important attorney's fees are important because here's what's going to happen let's just say somebody was defrauded out of a hundred dollars or a thousand dollars well that's not going to justify an attorney's time you know they're, they're going to need to make at least you know, ten thousand, twenty thousand, thirty thousand, forty thousand dollars to justify getting involved in the case because it's not just the attorney, right? The attorney has staff. These cases literally take years, so it's not like you know some magic. You know, I'm gonna wave my magic attorney wand and and we're gonna we're all gonna get paid. I mean, there there needs to be a light at the end of the tunnel. So when you have a statute that awards attorneys fees, it allows attorneys to take cases where the damages might be small. Because of just the nature of cryptocurrencies, I anticipate people who bought the cryptocurrency might have been outside of Florida, more likely than not, right? So maybe this goes to federal court, but it's probably in the plaintiff's best interest to keep it in state court. That's just generally how things work. But I, I don't know if maybe there are some stronger federal laws. You know, for sure, the Florida Deceptive Trade Practices Act is going to apply. So at a very minimum, you're going to get actual damages plus attorney's fees. Man, Florida might be the best state. To, if they don't have like treble damages in Florida, Florida might be the, the best state to commit fraud in. I mean, you're still going to get popped. Now, obviously, I've been talking about a civil lawsuit, the potential damages, getting uh, Ice Poseidon to pay back what he did through the Florida Deceptive Trade Practices Act. Uh, I think the law is on point. The biggest issue with suing somebody civilly is they need money to pay you back. Can't squeeze blood from a turnip. If somebody doesn't have money, then getting a judgment against them means nothing. It's just a piece of paper that says, you owe your victims X amount of money, but if you don't have that money, you're never gonna get that money. They'll probably just declare bankruptcy. Huh. 
So if I was the lawyer on this case, which I'm not, the first thing I would do, I would file some sort of injunction to freeze the assets that are in Ice Poseidon's crypto wallet. We had a premises liability case in Texas where somebody was hurt on property. We were afraid that the property owner didn't have enough money. They certainly didn't have enough insurance for the case. So what we did is we filed a list pendants because we heard that the property owner was trying to sell the property and presumably we thought that once that money was gone from the sale, we would never see it. It would get tied up. It would get put into different corporations. It wouldn't be enough to compensate our hurt victim. So we put a list pendants on the property. We stopped the sale or actually the sale went through, but the funds from the sale went into a treasury in the court. So the person who sold it, the defendant couldn't access them until we resolved the case. And just to be clear, you can't do that for every sort of lawsuit, but the property that was being sold was literally the subject of the lawsuit. So it's not like I can just freeze anybody's assets for anything, but you know, it's relevant. So here, I think it could be in the court's jurisdiction or possibility to freeze the crypto wallets that are subject to this lawsuit. Everybody, everybody following me? So obviously the biggest hurdle is recovering funds, right? Because if they're broke or they've spent the money, where are you going to get somebody to pay you back hundreds of thousands of dollars unless they're really rich and have other means of income? Which is why I think it's really interesting for somebody like a Logan Paul, who presumably committed another potentially allegedly deceptive cryptocurrency deal with Dink Doink. If I'm a lawyer and I have a client who is defrauded by Logan Paul, absolutely. I think you could sue him pretty easily you know why because he makes a lot of money and he will continue to make a lot of money so who cares if he gets popped with a one million two million three million dollar lawsuit from your client because he'll be able to pay it so you know there's something to be said you do put more of a target on your back the more well off you are i don't think ice poseidon is all that well off if he was willing to do all of that over 300k good night everybody good night May the blimp be with you. He's a catastrophic injury attorney who accidentally became a YouTuber. Attorney Tom.